um, in order to allow us to look at, address the question raised earlier, what is it that we seek to accomplish with education? Uh, beyond just pass scores in math and English and the other mechanisms that we've used to measure, what are the things that as a society we can agree, how do we measure it and how do we create the instruments that would enable the ministry then to really look in an objective manner at the output of the school system? So that is a proposal I'm tabling now. We don't need to discuss it now. We're going to actually um, shortly go into the next session, which is going to now continue with this discussion, having looked at the international experience, continue the focus on Jamaica and the state of play. Um, so we won't take a, a break now, however, if any of you want to get up and get a drink, please feel free to do so. We'll take about two minutes just to bring the presenters up here. I just want to take the opportunity to thank the Minister for taking time in a very busy day to come and join us. I found this discussion, and I think you'll all agree, very enlightening, very useful. Thank you. I'm Damien King, and the hat I'm wearing here is as a research fellow with the Caribbean Policy Research Institute. The, you know, if, if, if it were only for the dedication and eagerness of our educators, as evidenced by the fullness of this room and the enthusiasm for participation, Jamaica would have the best education system in the world. And, and, and with that, Philip, we can move on to the next session on our agenda where we are going to look at the issue of accountability in Jamaican education, the state of play. The minister in his lunchtime remarks having put accountability rather squarely on the agenda for education reform. This gives us an opportunity to segue into what we now see on the ground in terms of accountability. We have an exciting panel to address this issue. We have Dr. Elaine Foster Allen, who the minister himself introduced as the chief inspector of schools from the National Education Inspectorate. We have Dr. Dennis Minot, who is with the Association of Quietly Excellent Students. And to my immediate left is Mr. Basil Waite, who is the opposition spokesperson on education. So we'll get straight into the panel discussion, and I will first invite Dr. Foster Allen to speak for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Um, in order to, to, to explore the issue of accountability and to look at the state of play in the Jamaican context, I thought it necessary just to apprise myself of where we're coming from with this, um, this term and what it could mean for us as we develop our own model of accountability in the education system. Um, Traditionally, the term has been linked, and you may have done this already, sorry I missed the morning session, to managerial and accounting practices in both the private and public sectors, and politically to neoconservatism in the UK and in the US. Um, on, in the UK, it was um, the 1980s, no, um, local government of schools focusing on um, choice and so on in education. And in the US on the no child left behind principle. It, the concept was introduced into the language of international funding agencies as part of their strategic policy guides. And this goes back to the 1990s, early 2000 where um, the IDB, for example, made it quite clear that um, this would be a strategy to guide their support for primary and secondary education. And they linked this accountability to the decentralizing of educational management and increasing accountability um, of key stakeholders. They went further to, in terms of Jamaica, um, Errol Miller in the in 19, late 1990s um, talked about um, linking 
teacher incentives and accountability at the school level. And he was one of, of probably a, a handful of um, ex experts in the area. Um, Hyacinth Evans, um, Errol Miller, and uh, perhaps lately, um, Ezine from, from UWI. Um, Errol was of the opinion that we really needed, the education system really needed to have a monitoring and um, um, needed to be monitored, carefully monitored. And uh, we also needed to have the foundations of an accountability system in school, in, in our schools. The, in 2001, one of our former ministers of education took up that accountability argument and said in the white paper on education of 2001, accountability and performance management, these are some of the, the, the strategic objectives of the education department. And included in that was accountability and performance management in order to improve performance and win public confidence and trust. And I think if we go back to the, the early 2000s, you'll note that there was a, a huge outcry, public outcry, around the issue of school performance, um, championed in many ways by the, the, the media, the gleaner, uh, and so on. And a lot of people were rightly, in many ways, concerned about the performance of our schools in terms of student outcomes. So accountability was linked to performance management, the improvement of performance, and of course, value for money and winning public confidence. Um, in 2004, the then Minister, uh, Minister of Education, um, Mrs. Henry Wilson, spoke about the need to have closer supervision and monitoring of the system to achieve a higher degree of accountability. And she talked about the, the, the evaluation system being designed to improve professionalism of our teachers. So at this point, we move from, or at least the argument about accountability moves from value for money to include the processes, that's the monitoring, and the outcomes of education. I think in our thinking about accountability, we need to hold these concepts in the front of our minds, because what we want is rounded thinking about accountability, not haphazard and you know, all over the place thinking. Because the concept is quite, um, it, it, has its own proliferations and interpretations, and we need to be careful that we understand what it is we're talking about so that we can all get on the, um, the same. I see I have a few minutes, yeah. The Task Force, Force Report of 2004 also brought up the issue of accountability for performance reasons. And um, it assumed, again, value for money as being a key um, thing. It also talked about accountability being linked to equality of opportunities and therefore, arguably, outcomes for children. 